eBay Motors is here for the ride. You saw the potential. Through some elbow grease, fresh installs, and a whole lot of love, you transformed 100,000 miles and a body full of rust into a drive entirely its own. Look to your left. Look to your right. Yep, no one's got a ride like this. There's nothing else that sounds like, feels like, or looks like the set of wheels in your garage. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you can make sure your ride stays running smoothly. So there's no limit to how far you can take it. Brake kits, turbochargers, engines, exhaust kits, roof racks, LED headlights, bumpers, whatever your baby needs, eBay Motors has it. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, it's guaranteed to fit your ride the first time, every time, or your money back. Plus, at these prices, well, you're burning rubber, not cash. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. The following is a gopowercat.com and Spirit Street production. You've discovered your link to GoPowerCat.com's PowerCat Overtime Podcast, presented by Fridge Wholesale Liquor, and it starts right now. Now, let's go to the WTC Gig Powered Studios. Here's your host, GoPowerCat.com publisher, Tim Fitzgerald. It's the Overtime, the PowerCat Overtime Podcast, sponsored by the Fridge Wholesale Liquor, Tim Fitzgerald, Zach Carlson. Ryan Gilbert, your trifecta of mediocre. Are we a mediocre? I don't know. Maybe yep. trifecta of manliness. Uh, not really accurate either. Anyhow, if you listen to the questions podcast this week, it ended in complete disarray and controversy. We apologize to the unsettling feeling we left with our listeners as we argued over how to pronounce crayon. Crayola, what? crayon. What is that word? Crayola. How do you pronounce that waxy <laughs> stick that you write with as a child? Zach Carlson, it's a crayon. It's a crayon. Crayon. Huh. No, it's a crown. Wow. This is where we ended the last podcast, our last gathering, and we have come to no resolution. But I did request of Zach to do some research, something really done on the PowerCat yeah. podcast. So I just Googled how to pronounce crayon and Google is getting better at stuff and they have actually put in a pronunciation kind of like when you search like a definition and Google will give you the definition for the word. Now they'll give you the pronunciation. So I just clicked uh, crayon and Fitz will have to do this to add this in, but it is how I pronounce it. It's crayon. So Google says that I am correct. Okay. So that if is, I go to Google right now. Yeah. And type in how to pronounce crayon. Make sure you spell it crayon, not how you pronounce it. <laughs> Here we go. Crayon. Crayon. I'm kind of lazy pronouncing it, and you're emphatically pronouncing it. Crayon. Crayon. Okay. Well, I think you're right. Damn it. I hate admitting when Zach's right. Yes. I know this. Gills is wrong. He's right, you know. No. <laughs> uh, it's not a crown. That's what the Kansas City Monarchs will wear when they play in the T-Mobile Center. I love it. <laughs> and they'll have to get their jerseys colored in crowns. I like it. Wow. I like it. We're sponsored by The Fridge. You know the spiel. Get to The Fridge. Get your liquor. Enjoy your liquor. Go back to The Fridge for more liquor, uh, beer, and other accessories. The fridge at the corner of this or that in the town in which we live. Lazy. Your questions from Wild Bass Station. Let's get going. I'm promised a real zinger to start off the overtime. Gills, zing me. From Wizard6294. Should Riley Gates have to buy a Go Power Cat subscription to ask questions? Oh. Should we do that to him? Well, he's still kind of in the family. You know, he's in the bigger family. Like, I don't know. But we don't ask questions. I know. But it's but also, we don't listen to the podcast. Like, Riley listens to the podcast. He tells me as such. But why? Why would you do that? Why would you do any of that? Yeah, Riley has his AirPods in all day long listening to something. The podcast, ESPN shows, whatever. He's listening to something at all times. 
Major input. Treasure Island, origin of the species. Everything you always wanted to know about sex. <gasps> I feel like at the end of the day, 30 years down the road, Riley's going to be a lot smarter than all of us because he's been inputting information at all times. And and I think we can agree that those who listen to the PowerCat Overtime podcast are more enlightened, better prepared for the world, and also have a better sense of humor than your normal human beings. I think that is scientifically proven. Uh, studies coming out of Cambridge about that, uh, but more on that later. That's not right. Probably not. But uh, Riley uh, is a freeloader. I think we can all agree with that um, in every way. Uh, but he's kind of a fun-loving freeloader. We're going to keep him around because one thing, Zach, on occasion, Riley comes through and writes a story for us from the desk, which rarely happened before. So he's a value yeah. to us. Riley has value well, to us. He... Uh... Right when I was sending that newsletter, he sent me a link to a story he wrote. Nice. That was Big 12 related. Was it about crayons? So no. It was about the Big 12 <laughs> ADs creating a plus one model potentially for 2020. I didn't even read the story, so I'm not really sure what a plus one model is. <laughs> I mean, I've heard it. I can't tell you. I can't tell you exactly off the top of my head what that means. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Isn't that isn't plus one technically what the college football playoff is? Four teams plus one game. I feel like that's what that means. Nope, it's exactly what I've been saying. The Big Twelve is pushing a full nine game league schedule and one non conference game. Ah, okay. It's exactly what I've been pushing, and I think that's what the Big Ten has been wanting. Because, in all honesty, if you have Notre Dame on your schedule, you do not want to lose Notre Dame. That's USC, that's Michigan. I don't know who else Notre Dame has on the schedule, but yeah. you don't want to give that up. Uh, well, Notre Dame wasn't doesn't want to lose those games either. Right, exactly. And it solves the Notre Dame problem. And I don't know if someone then has an opening that needs to be plugged. I imagine that would possibly mean scheduling another power five or maybe BYU slides in there. I don't know where BYU fits into this if they do at that point, but yes, that would, uh, that would so enhance college football because we would not lose those great non-conference games that we've been looking forward to. And in the case of Kansas state, you would still play Vanderbilt. I assume Vanderbilt's only power five non-con is Kansas state because they're in the SEC. You'd have to look at it. I mean, I, UConn went well, UConn went independent this year, um, so they're back to independent. So they'll have to play other other teams, you know, that are in conferences. So I don't know what their conference makeup looks like, but a lot of those they might they might share a lot of similar and common opponents. So it, you might get into some scheduling snafus if that happens. What do you, how, th- this question is completely off the rails. We were talking about Riley Gates, man. <laughs> He brings so much to the podcast. Yes, he does. Uh, let's see. Let's see. They play Mercer, Kansas State, Louisiana Tech, and Colorado State. So, yes, it's the only Power Five. There we go. Riley, thank you for contributing, even though this wasn't your question. We'll let you stick around. End of question. From a hoove for KSU, if you were to win a million dollars and could bring back a local restaurant that Manhattan has lost, which one would it be? It's so easy to say Harry's right now. It's that is a normal choice. I have the feeling that that space is so iconic. Something will go in there. I'm going to answer Wahoo Fire and Ice Grill. I might move it. So that's yeah, that's a pretty recent one. Um, other restaurants, I don't. Oh, you know, a wild card for us would be happy valley chinese it was by far the best chinese in town in my book we haven't found anything even close we haven't hardly eaten chinese since it went out of business i know what my choice is bring it coming back to the west side of town is willie's sports bar and grill in the heyday i'd bring back the heyday willie yeah but like after they got rid of smoking yeah yeah those two things put together yeah Gummies and pyramid pizza. I don't know if those are local, but bring them back. 
Gil's Pyramid Pizza closed before you were born. No, I've been there. The one in Lawrence was still open for up until I think earlier this year, last year or something. Oh, maybe I'm wrong. Fire! I mean, I've been to one. So long open in in 2001, and Pyramid Pizza would have closed before then. So you're I was born probably in nine. So I have a really good memory from when I was two years old. You weren't eating Pyramid Pizza <laughs> if you even remember it. <laughs> That's for sure. I was. But I do uh, remember Gumby's. I was a yeah. fan of Doughboys. I thought their pizza was really had. good. I don't think I ever had Doughboys. And I might have had Gumby's once. Yeah. I, I, that replaced Gumby's, and that was yeah. from the owner of Tubby's and Fats, Doughboy. Um, oh. And it was good pizza. They, I thought it was really good. They just didn't catch their niche, and they shut it down. Um, yeah, I can't think of anything back from the day. It sounded like we had great dining. I, but, yeah, I'd bring back Wahoo just because I loved it. Oh. I love the people that were there. It was fun that it was in Aggieville, so I mentioned I might move it. In hindsight, it'd be interesting to see if Wahoo was in a different location, if they had persisted and made it, or if Aggieville was kind of their niche. Not sure. But, man, good food, great people, great martinis. Oh, man, I miss it. Oh, drats. I'm going to cry. I'm really trying to think of other restaurants that have closed that I absolutely, like, missed. Or ate out a lot. Oh, I know. I know. This. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, it's Texas Star. Not Hibachi Hut. Yeah. Texas Star. Yeah. Texas Star was... Willie's and Texas Star was like kind of like our two go-tos when I was a kid. Like, we'd eat there all the time. I'd, I loved getting that chicken fried chicken at Texas Star. Which I guess was Lone Star at one time, but then they had to change the name, I think. Yeah, exactly. Here. So like, yeah, well, we can be Texas star, but man, I love going there. They had the best chips and salsa. Maybe not the chips, but the salsa was delicious. It was amazing. Did you guys ever go to Bob's diner? I've never been there. And, uh, oh. I don't know if, uh, anyone's ever going to go there again. Oh, let's put it this way. I think I've gone there. I'm not sure. It's all blurry for some reason, but yeah. Wait, is it still open Zach? No. Uh, well, I, it might be open. I, mean, I thought no. they had some like obviously, obviously the owner stuff. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, the owner is in some legal <laughs> trouble right now that I don't really care to get into. Yeah, no. But no, I have never eaten at Bob's Diner. Me neither. From Who for KSU? Would you rather have unlimited Whataburger for two years or free pizza from Pizza Hut for five years? I think you guys already know my answer, but go ahead. It's Whataburger because you already get free pizza. <laughs> well, I guess there you go. Yeah. Hmm. Wow. So we've got a twist. That was a cliffhanger. Uh, we didn't see that coming at all. Uh, <laughs> um, I would do Whataburger for two years. Yeah. Um, wow. And uh, after a free Whataburger for two years, I wouldn't make it to years three, four, and five. Anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> Front load the years on the contract there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What happened to Fitz? He, uh, he died of Whataburger, but he was freaking happy, although his casket weighed 450 pounds. <laughs> he beat. He sure beat cancer. He gave. He gave cancer the business, but how, how did it he was beat Whataburger cancer? that oh, did him in? <laughs> yeah, he killed himself with with Whataburger. The cancer didn't get him. Uh, man. <laughs> I would I would rather have Whataburger for two years, but also I always I know it probably makes you guys mad, but I like answering these questions logically. I'm gonna have more value out of Pizza Hut for five years because yeah. there isn't a Whataburger in town, and if I'm working in Manhattan, the Pizza Hut's gonna pay off for much longer. That's probably true, you know. And we got one on the west side of town now. That's Hey-o. a pretty. My God, they can just like throw it to your house, like yeah. frisbee it to your house. I can walk. I can probably walk to Pizza Hut and back uh, in the same amount of time it would take me to drive to, say, Pizza Ranch and back. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's too bad that this Pizza Hut isn't going to have a buffet. Zach, would you take the Pizza Ranch buffet for five years or free Pizza Hut delivery takeout for five years? Ooh, uh, ooh, probably Pizza Hut. I think that Pizza go. has more reeatable value than Pizza. Like you can get tired of Pizza Ranch. You know, like I feel like Pizza Hut has a much 
greater lifetime value. Mm-hmm. But like on a, you know, like if it's a, if it's a, like just a one-off, like right now, pizza ranch or pizza, you probably pick pizza ranch, I'm, but like for I'm, forever, I want to pick it right but, now, man, I miss pizza ranch. Will buffets ever come back? I think you can go. Do you want me to go and bring you something back from Pizza Ranch? No, no, I don't want that. <laughs> God. You want to go and slice it up yourself? Yeah, I'm really, really hungry right now because we didn't mention this on the questions podcast, but uh, I overslept today, so I won't rolled out of bed. Uh, if you listen to the questions podcast, I couldn't speak because my I had morning voice, and uh, I'm, I haven't eaten today, and it's into the afternoon. <laughs> I'm going to starve to death. I haven't eaten either, actually. I'm with you. Same. I'm very hungry, but let's keep moving on. Yeah, this is all <laughs> the more, more reason to go. go. We have more food questions, okay, so oh boy. here we go. <laughs> Another one from Who4KSU. What is the best brisket place you've ever eaten at? Best ribs, best pulled pork. Man, I don't, I don't do this. I, well, first of all, I'm not a brisket guy, oddly enough. That's not... I'm a pork guy more than brisket. Um, so I, I'm really not the guy to rate brisket. I mean, my go-to in general is Jack Stack. I mean, the best rib I've ever had was the what Crown Prime rib, whatever they do, they serve. It's on the bone. It's a rib. My God, it's a piece of heaven at Jack Stack. Uh, pulled pork. I don't know. I don't rate I don't do this. Yeah, pulled pork is, at least for me, pulled pork isn't something that, it's not my preferred option. Brisket is my preferred option. So what's your answer? Same, like same with, well, my answer for for brisket here is, do they slice it in a meat slicer? Like when you go to Good Sense and they slice the meat right in front of you, I like seeing that. So Arthur Bryant's is my place for that. It's, fr- I know that you don't like that. <laughs> but I like going to Arthur Bryant's because it's nicely, thinly sliced brisket and it's fresh. Interesting. I, I, I like that. I don't, as much as I enjoy Cox Brothers and Cox Brothers is good barbecue in Manhattan, I, I really don't like how they slice their brisket. It's a little too thick. And it's all in like lined up slices. I like a pile of meat on, a, on bread. Interesting. Uh, that's very yeah. valid in my book. Thick brisket, especially like if you overcook the brisket, you can save it if you slice it right. But if you slice it too thick, it really ugh. dries out. Yeah, it really dries out. Gills, you got any but, on this one? Not really. I like Jack Stack. I'm with you on that. Um, I'm not a big fan of Oklahoma Joe's or I guess Joe's, Casey Joe's, whatever yeah, it's Casey called Joe's. now. Yeah, I, I always thought that was a little bit overrated in my opinion. Please don't hate me for that, but. Q39 is right up the street from our house here, so we get that a lot. I think it's pretty good as well. Um, so Jack Stack or Q39 would be my answer. All three and of those. And then I don't are... have any ribs or pulled pork or, or brisket. I don't have much of a say on the actual different items on the menu. Yeah, I'm. I'm aside from pork, I'm a sausage fan, and I think yeah. Joe's sausage is really good. I actually like Cox Brothers sausage the best. Oh, it's, <laughs> if, it's we're, if we're talking about sausage, Cox Brothers sausage is my favorite sausage by far. In fact, and I think, uh, and probably Jack Stack is number two. In fact, uh, I have some Cox Brothers sausage in my refrigerator with my own smoked ribs. We have Ooh. settled lunch options at the Fitzgerald House. Wow. Yes. I think as far as ribs for me, I don't think I've ever ordered ribs outside of Chili's. I think Chili's <laughs> might have been the only time I've ever ordered ribs, which is kind of embarrassing to say because, I mean, like, and it was probably like 10, 15 years ago. Like, I was a kid. Like, I remember going to Chili's and, like, we'd go to Chili's a lot as a kid as well as the other restaurants I talked about earlier. And I remember, like, there was one day, you know, they have the new kids' menus out and they put a half slab of ribs on there. I'm like, Mama, my baby back, baby back, baby back, Mama, my baby. Chili's baby back ribs. Chili's baby back ribs. Barbecue sauce. Chili's baby back ribs. Chili's baby back ribs. Barbecue sauce. This is awesome. I'm going to get ribs on a kid's menu. And that's, I'd get ribs, you know, for like a year or two. 
from Chili's and that's really all the, the ribs I've eaten. I don't order ribs at barbecue because I'd rather eat brisket and sausage. Well, also, ribs are always overpriced at barbecue places, in my the, opinion. Well, they're overpriced. They're priced correctly, but they're expensive. Yeah. I mean, right. Yeah. Comparatively, they're overpriced, but they're just expensive and they require work. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, that, and if I'm like out to eat and I'm doing other things and I can't go home and shower, I mean, it's up, <laughs> it's up on your hands, your face. Yeah. And no matter what you do, you can wash your hands and face, but somehow the brisket <laughs> or the rib rub ends up infused into your skin. And you smell like that the rest of the night. So I don't typically do. If I'm going to a Rails game, I'm not going to order ribs. If I'm going out for the night, I'm not going to order ribs. Ribs. I had ribs for lunch. That's why I'm doing this. If I'm going to eat and then drink beers and go home, I will probably try some ribs if it's a good place. <laughs> the humans will be right back. Selling a little or a lot. Shopify helps you do your thing, however you cha-ching. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. From the launch your online shop stage, to the first real-life store stage, all the way to the did we just hit a million orders stage. Shopify is here to help you grow, whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits. Shopify helps you sell everywhere, from their all-in-one e-commerce platform to their in-person POS system. Wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify has got you covered. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout. 15% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms. And sell more with less effort thanks to Shopify Magic, your AI-powered all-star. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. And Shopify is the global force behind Allbirds, Rothy's, and Brooklinen, and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. Plus, Shopify's award-winning 24-7 help is there to support your success every step of the way. Because businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash odyssey podcast all lowercase go to shopify.com slash odyssey podcast now to grow your business no matter what stage you're in shopify.com slash odyssey podcast getting the crew together isn't as easy as it used to be we get it life comes at you fast but trust us your pals are desperate for a good hang and when they hear you stock the party with drinks from drizzly they'll be banging down your door let Drizzly, the go-to app for drink delivery, take care of the supplies. All you need is an excuse. It doesn't even have to be a good one. It's your dog's birthday. The loquats are finally ripe. Whatever. With Drizzly, you can compare prices on a massive selection of beer, wine, and spirits and get them delivered straight to your door. Which means you can entice the crew to leave their houses without ever leaving yours. Whatever the occasion. Download the Drizzly app or go to drizzly.com. That's D-R-I-Z-L-Y dot com today. Must be 21 plus, not available in all locations. The ads are done. Speak humans. Question from Seton Hall Survivor. <laughs> what classic SNL skit character do you most identify as? For example, Fitz as Chris Farley in The Chippendales, Zach as Mr. <laughs> Falcon in The Continental, and Gills as Mr. Peepers. To be completely honest, I don't, I can't think of the the last two that you gave for for Gills and I. I the, the, the Fitz is Chris Farley and the Chippendales is 100 percent perfect. That's like, awesome. it's just freaking awesome. like that's the best. That's the best one. But oh, for me, for me, I love I love the Blizzard Man sketches where Andy Samberg is the Blizzard Man. This just like ridiculous loser white rapper that everyone hype, like you know one guy hypes up and they usually have some rapper or you know famous person that's you know the hype man for the <laughs> for blizzard man saying he's the best and trying to get him on these other musicians tracks i don't know if i identify it as him but he's the you know he's an easy one for me to quote i guess i, I enjoy that i identify as the land shark which is original snl that might be season yeah, one that's old and it's not even that funny, but it was just it was funny for SNL because it was just so outlandish that a shark would be at your door knocking. Who's there? Land shark. It was just stupid funny to me. But uh the ESPN guys as well, Greg Twinkle and, and or Pete Twinkle, Greg Stink. I don't know, the ESPN classic and they're commentating all these old 
old sports with uh, intimate ladies products as the as the sponsor. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Those are other ones that very quotable, fun to fun to rewatch. I like pickles. Cat's got a nice series of questions for us. First one is, "What is your most useless talent?" Juggling. Period. Although I tried juggling the other day, and with my vision issues now and lack of practice, I actually suck. Dude was not impressed. Dude, the dog was not impressed. Juggling though has always been my useless talent. I don't know if I'd call this useless, but like I get on Google maps a lot and especially if I've never been somewhere, but like figuring out directions and knowing where to go in places that I've never been is like my, I don't know, weird talent. I, I agree with that 100%. Yeah. <laughs> it is useless because like, you can just have Google do it for you. <laughs> <laughs> but it's nice when you have yeah. Zach and right. like Google doesn't know there's a road closure for whatever reason. Zach gets you out of it. Zach's like, "Oh, go up here and there." Da, da, da. It's like he's Zackle, Zackle, Zach. Another thing I've noticed lately with Google Maps is they'll give you some really bad alternate directions. Like they'll give you the main one that everybody should you know know, and then they'll give you like two really just trash, like not even like like reasonable like. Like, let's, for example, like, let's say you're going from Manhattan to Wichita, like reasonable ones, you know, 77 down. And then another reasonable one would be like 177. And then for the, the opposite or, you know, for like your third option, you know, going west, you know, taking 135 to Salina, like those would be reasonable routes to do. But now Google Maps is going to be like, go to Topeka and then get on 335 to and then down to 35 to Emporia to get to Wichita. Yeah. They'll still give you the 77 one as the main one, but they'll give you like just two other just out of the world. And then like the other way, like go to like Hutchinson and then back to Wichita. Like yeah. it's just like, they had like it's just like, like there's other routes that would be close in time. But I feel like the, the goal is for them to like give you the truly most optimal one and give you two really bad options that you just accept that one. I don't know. I think they're on the take that they have accepted bribes from certain routes to, to be popular. Like uh, when we went to uh, Memphis, Google Maps gave me two options. And I did it from Memphis back to Manhattan. Two options. Through St. Louis or through uh, Oklahoma. Spring uh oh. Going down the way you do through Springfield was not an option. It would not show that as an option until you started on that path. Yeah. And as soon as you started like you that like, direction, it would say, okay, you can go up here and take this. I'm like, that's what you should have done from the start because it's like a half hour faster. It was very strange. They didn't offer that as an option. You might have had your selection set on Google for avoid Cephas in the back hills of Missouri. <laughs> I didn't know that was an option. I have <laughs> got to make I, sure that's un, unchecked. I don't uh, avoid toll roads or, or two lane roads. I, I didn't <laughs> avoid Cephas. <laughs> Yes, you do go through some places. Yeah, indeed. Kills, do you have a useless talent? Not really. I mean, I've got a pretty good talent where I can look at the receipt on Pizza Hut, look at the address, and I can get the general direction of where I'm going. I'm pretty proud of myself for that. So, hey, Google, Maps, Google Maps. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Google Maps, whatever. <laughs> so, it's not really a talent then. So, I don't know. I think delivering pizza hot and fresh in a timely manner is a talent. It's it's important to society. Very important to society. Gills is currently in the background having a, a some kind of fit. I think it might be a seizure or he's coughing hey. and now laughing. It's I, I can't. I, 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 ha I had it minimized to where it was just fits. Whoever's was talking, so I, I did not see oh, it. Oh, it, it was epic. It was. I was really <laughs> concerned for him. And if you don't tip, it does not come as fast. Ooh, insider. You move to the oh, bottom yeah. of the delivery chain? Uh-huh. If well, you don't pre-tip? If you don't pre-tip? Well, like, if, what if, if I want to pay you cash? If it's a contactless delivery uh, and then they don't tip, I'm like, well, okay, you're screwed. Like, no, <laughs> not happening. How oh. dare you? How dare you say such a thing? That is insanity. Do you have the little pizza stand like Domino's has? Um, what do you mean? 
like Domino's has a little box that they'll like, I think they call it the pizza pedestal. Oh yeah. 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 We do. Yeah. You have a pizza pedestal. It's like a, it's like a crown actually, like a red crown. And we just put a crown over there. <laughs> like I, said, I knew you were going to do that. I set you up perfectly. I should have done that. I, knew I should have said something, but got you. Like the actual king, like a crown, a crown on your head, nice. and it's giant, and the boxes just go right on there. And you step back and give them a nice smile. Unless they don't tip, then you just you know, leave it. Text them. Pizza's on the door. Do you have to wait until they answer? Um, if if I do the crown thing and they give a good tip, I'll be very polite and wait for them. But if if they don't tip, I'll be honest. I just put on their porch and get out. Yeah. Probably shouldn't say that, but hey, I'm doing it. All right. So disrespectful for yeah. you to say something like that. That's that's. You got to uh, play the game. You got to tip. That's how the streets of Overland Park are, man. They're rough. <laughs> They're mean. <laughs> man, if you don't tip, oh, man, it's brutal. Oh, wow. <laughs> tough, tough, tough. The other day I had a cash order, and then this lady gave me, it was like twenty one seventy seven. She literally gave me $21.77. I'm like, you couldn't just give me like $22 and let me keep the quarter or whatever it was. So that was annoying, but oh, well. That is blasphemous. Damn. Hey, rich people can't it's, stay it's rich. It's rough out here. Tipping. I was having a deep conversation with this worker who also works at another Pizza Hut in Olathe. And Olathe is not the, uh, I'm sorry if you live in Olathe, but, you know, it's a little lower income than Overland Park. Oh, yeah. Those he was Olathe telling hats. me the tips, the, uh -oh, <laughs> the tips there are actually better because the people, you know, are more aware of how much we are relying on those tips to make money. So uh, you're going to get a lot better tips just because those people that live there they, they appreciate it yep. and they've worked those Definitely. jobs and and yeah they might be in there's a better chance they're in the service industry too yeah best they tippers understand. are service industry people other people that are relying on tips understand what it's about yep i tip better now than i've ever done my whole life yeah. since i started working there yeah i've always tipped well but you know i i, I admire service industry people because they share within their their family of service industry people. They're fun to hang out with because of that. Another question from I Like Pickles Cat. Who was your worst teacher? Oh, this, I know mine. This is easy I know for mine. me. I had a uh, philosophy class, and she was named Fatima, and you couldn't understand her. <laughs> and I didn't understand the topic because it was like weird mathematical formulas or something. I don't even know what the hell was going on in this class. I have no clue to this day what was going on. And I was in a weird building. I think it's the building that got torn down for Hale Library. I was like in a lower level, like a small theater, big classroom type thing. It was the worst class. None of us knew what the hell was going on. Couldn't understand the teacher. She wasn't teaching the topic very well. It was just, oh, man, it was a mess. Oh, I, I have nightmares about that class. It was so bad. I have two. I have one for college. I have one for high school. So I'll do the high school one first. The high school one. Uh, I'm a freshman at the Freshman Center in Manhattan, ninth grade. It's this this lady's first day teaching in Manhattan. She's, you know, she's probably taught for 20 years somewhere, done, you know, something, you know, probably late 40s, early 50s. I don't know. Uh, she comes from Texas. And this is English. This is language arts. I think we learn more about Texas history than we did about language arts or reading books. We literally nicknamed her Texas history because we were more likely to learn about that than we were to learn about English. And she was weird. Nobody liked her. Um, she was literally reassigned at semester. But for college, I took a class called services marketing. And a better name for the class. This is another, like both of my, my, my stories here are basically course material was not what the class was supposed to be. So it was services marketing in, in college. And this class would have better been named con pharmaceutical conspiracies. We watched so many just like documentaries on pharmaceuticals and it had nothing to do with services marketing. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. 
I, I, I really hope that someone listening to this podcast <laughs> happened to be a student at the same time. Cause I think he taught multiple sections of it. I think there was at least two or three sections of it. It wasn't just our section, hmm. but I, man, most amazing thing you said there was someone listening to this podcast. I, yeah. Yeah. I don't think it's happening. <laughs> Gills, you got what anything a, here? What a chance. I've Can got something me? very similar. I can't beat you, Zach, but with uh, her name was Paula V and couldn't understand a single word she said. This was a few years ago and it was a stats class. It was just, it was hell. You know, I couldn't understand a word and BS my way through it. I think I got a B, but it was, it was tough. But overall, like, especially switching to journalism, all these professors now that I'm dealing with are just awesome, great people. Um, very helpful, but Paul V was not that helpful. <laughs> Next question from I like pickles cat. What would you name your boat if you had one? Oh, you know, that's, this is one of those things that I've thought of, but I really haven't thought of a good name. Huh? Does anyone have an answer to this? I was hoping you would. Oh my God. It's got to be a female name, right? Boats are named after women. Is that the rule? No, uh, I think some are, but no, I think they... like she's going down. I don't think anybody said that he's going down. <laughs> What'd you say? Ooh. Ooh. I'm very sorry. <laughs> that was that was unintended. No, no one you no intended there. Very sorry. <laughs> um. Uh... I don't know. I uh, this is a great question, but I I'm not prepared to answer this. What are we going to do with this question? I've never had this where I'm to- totally baffled. Uh Bodie McBoatface. Bodie McBoatface. That's that's what I'd go with. I probably name it after one of my dogs. Like Dexter. Dexter was uh. one of my favorite dogs. I'm not sure. This is really good. The this- SS dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like it. Yes, that's Tanner. I like it. I like it a lot. Um, about, since I will never own a boat, I've never really put serious thought into it. But I appreciate the creativity in boat naming. Yeah, especially Zach's boat. That was that was a great name. One more question from I like pickles cat. What is the dumbest way you have injured yourself? <laughs> Oh, there's so many. There's so many. Uh, I did break my ankle, uh, rolling my ankle coming downstairs outside of uh, Dirty Dogs. So that's a dandy. But obviously, <laughs> the, the the best one I did was in the fraternity house when I um, opened up my window. It didn't have a screen on it. And I was sticking my head out my window to yell at someone in the parking lot. So I had to kind of get my head out there a little bit. And the window didn't stay open, and it slammed me in the back of the head. And I cut my eyebrow on, like, the lip, the window seal, the where the wow. weather ceiling was. And it just sliced me open. I still have a scar to this day. Just sliced me open perfectly. Absolutely idiotic. I opened a window. It hit me in the back of the head and cut me across my eyebrow. That's so me, by the way. Those pike windows, they'll get you. I know. It was a dangerous place. It was really tough in that house. Could uh, fall down at any moment. See, when I think about it, I really haven't been injured that much. I'm a pretty, I've never broken a bone. The only thing is I can think of are like rolling ankles. But the one time I really was injured was when I was skiing as a kid. And some old dude just barrels through the mountain through my legs and then I hit my head and then I have a concussion. That was dumb. Like it wasn't my fault. I'm skiing and some dude that doesn't know how to pizza and he's going French fries just straight into me. What does that mean? Pizza and French fries? I have no idea what that means. (laughs) Gills, you've skied, right? You know what that is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Snow plowing. If you know what that is. Yeah. All right, little dudes, great to see you out here. My name is Thumper, and I'm going to be your cool ski instructor. His name is Thumper. We're going to take it slow, take it easy, make sure everybody has a good time. Okay, we're going to do this without any pulls until we know our two primary feet positions. To go slow, we wedge our skis together in the shape of a slice of pizza. Then to go faster, we put them parallel like french fries. You see that? Pizza, french fries. Pizza, french fries. But, yeah, he just takes me out. Thank goodness I was wearing a helmet, but, like, I was probably out for a good 
20, 30 seconds. It wasn't my fault. Some dude yeah. just decides to take me out from behind. Like, that's you know that's why dirty. I, you know why it was your fault? Why is it my fault? Because you decided to go skiing, which is dangerous, Zach. I will never be injured skiing. I won't do it. Boo. Like, like I'm never going to die of a heart attack while running a marathon. No, it's not going to happen. Be accountable. Gills, your turn. <laughs> So I was in third grade, and it was recess at Sunset Ridge Elementary, and we were swinging, and you're probably thinking I fell off, right? I'm hoping. I fell off, but I fell off backwards. So, like, you know, when it was going forwards, and then it would go backwards, and then I, like, flew off backwards and landed on my wrist, and I broke my left wrist. Wow. Lucky you didn't snap your neck. I know. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Good Lord. It didn't hurt too bad. And then like a few minutes later, I was like, dang, this kind of does hurt. So then I went to the nurse and she was like, yep, you so broke it. This is the Rub butterfly, dirt on it. butterfly effect. <laughs> if Gills had snapped his neck and died in the third grade, there would be people in Overland Park still waiting on their pizza delivery. <laughs> wow. And there would be a guy named Riley Gates still on this podcast. No, no. Yeah. We'd have someone <laughs> else. We'd have, we'd have uh, Fatima. Or Pallavi. Yeah, Exactly. Last question of the podcast from a very hairy man. Love it. And this is very deep. We've got to listen closely here. Which planet in our solar system best represents each Big 12 team? This includes Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. One team gets left out, and you decide which. Okay, well, we, we are going to go right now with Baylor is Uranus. What are they saying? West Virginia is the one that gets left out, right? Because they're so far out of the solar system. Right. They're like a, <laughs> they're like a comet just passing through for a yeah. little bit. Baylor is Uranus. Uh, well, Texas has to be Jupiter, doesn't it? Big and useless. More stupider. Yeah. Um, oh, K-State's Earth. Earth? Yeah, it's home, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, hey, use, what should KU be? I'm going to say... Say Mercury, just to get nice and close to the sun, because that's who they think they are. Okay, yeah. I don't know. Okay, you. Mercury, it's the center of everything. That's it. Yeah. Iowa State's probably Mars, because they think they're just like us, but they're not. Yeah, that's a good one. Okay, what do we got out there? We got Saturn. Texas Tech for Saturn? Just, I don't know. Out in the middle of nowhere? Uh, that'd be Pluto, wouldn't it? Well, what, what, it should, what, who should be Pluto then? It's got to be West Virginia. No, we, we're, West Virginia's out. We kicked them oh, out of the solar oh, system. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know, yeah. The Texas Tech for Pluto then. Hmm. I think that's. I think Texas Tech for Pluto is good then. I think TCU should be Neptune. I don't know why, but I do. Yeah, because you don't no comment. Quite, you don't quite understand why they're there. Yeah. <laughs> what am I forgetting here? Hmm. Hokie State, we have Oklahoma State's Venus, close to K State, but yeah, I like it. But not oh, Iowa State. Like it, you know. Yeah. Uh, that leaves if o Texas is if Texas is Jupiter, then that leaves OU for Saturn. Right. I think we did it, folks. I think we did it. Wow, that, that was a challenging question, and I think we pulled it off. Uh, we were going with Kansas at the center of the universe in their mind as uh, Mercury, because they think everything revolves around them, and they're wrong. Next up would be, what, Venus is OSU? Yeah. Then Earth is K-State. I've burdened these out of order, so it's taking me a little. Mars is Iowa <laughs> State. Now I don't even know the order. It's Jupiter is next. <laughs> Jupiter is big and useless. It is Texas. Saturn is right next to them. And, uh, yeah, that's Oklahoma, Oklahoma for all the rings. Yep. They've got a lot of rings there. Hey, uh, hey I like it a lot. Uh, and, of course, then after that, we have TCU is Neptune and uh, uh, Baylor is Uranus, of course. And Texas Tech is Pluto because they're just way out there and nobody wants to visit. And West Virginia is a comet. comet. Passing They're a dwarf planet. <laughs> They're just passing through. They're in the system for now, and then they'll be out eventually and part of the ACC planet family. 
That's it for the podcast. That was the PowerCat Overtime Podcast. We hope you enjoyed it. We're sponsored by The Fridge. We do this every week. I'll be back next week with another Life of Fitz, kind of nailing down that guest. Hopefully his name is Jamar Samuels. We'll see if we can work it out. Thanks for listening, everyone. I know it's going to be fun. I love Jam Sam. That'll do it. Talk to you next week. You've been listening to the PowerCat Overtime Podcast, presented by Fridge Wholesale Liquor. PowerCat Podcast, all rights reserved, gopowercat.com and Spirit Street Publishing. With Blue Link Plus, you can access your Hyundai Tucson Limited remotely. Doors unlocked, temperature set, lost car found. There it is. Get complimentary class-leading Blue Link Plus. Call 562-314-4603 for complete details.